So I don't know if y'all saw this, but uh, eSports. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I just got some news that makes all of 2023 a huge waste of my time. It kind of feels like I opened up a kissing booth in 2020. What is this news? What wasted all of my time? Well, to give you some context, we have to go back to the start of the year where I announced that I'm joining up with Moist Critical, a.k.a. Charlie, and his Moist Esports organization. Moist I love Mo how, like, the video he uses as the example of the announcement is just some random clip chimp channel that has 241 subscribers. He doesn't even find the original video from, like, Charlie or Ludwig's channel. He's like, yeah, just look it up. Okay, the first one, yeah. Oh, that's pretty much what happened. You might have heard of it before, and it's taken up a lot of my time this year. Making merch for it, signing oh, wow. Melee players, watching the events. It's a nice that's hat. That's all really like fun, and I enjoyed a lot of it. But the biggest crown jewel and the biggest time spend was our Valorant team. The Moist Ooh. Moguls Valorant team cost hundreds of thousands of dollars and dozens and dozens of hours every single month just to get off the ground and to operate. Absolutely. I was really proud of the team. We did very well. But then... I received this news this morning. An update regarding the teams participating in VCT Americas 2024, which is basically like the tier one franchise, yeah. top of the line, North American teams uh, and South American teams. After several months in rounds of... <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that sucks. Communication with the guard. The organization has failed to meet the deadline to agree with the team participation agreement for VCT Americas. As a result, the guard will not be participating in 2024 VCT Americas League. Okay. What does this mean? Well, basically, the guard, a team that we competed against for a chance to be in this pro VCT Americas League, yeah. is no longer going to be in it because they didn't sign the paperwork for it. And so, as a result... I mean, I've had a lot of situations where I didn't sign the paperwork, too. I get it. But, you know, whenever there's, like, a multi-million dollar thing on the line, I'll usually figure it out. They're not letting any they team forgot. into the Pro League. Everyone's going to stay in amateurs. They're going to stick with 10 teams for the upcoming no season. No team will be promoted. And guess who beat us on the way to maybe Ooh, make it to I don't the know. franchise? Who was it? The guard. 3-0 in the Losers' Finals which was our only chance to make it to the Ascension Tournament uh -huh. to become a franchise team as opposed to what we are now, which is more like a minor league team. Right. Uh, and, and that sucks because it basically means that none of it mattered. L losing didn't matter because the people that beat us aren't even going to go on to do great things. Yeah. How do we get to this point? Well, let's rewind a bit. If you guys don't know, this has been an amazing month for Valorant. In fact, they just wrapped up VCT Champs, which is their largest event. Well, it's an amazing month for Valorant right now because Valorant's a popular game. Whenever Valorant's not a popular game anymore, and this will happen, it will, well, then they're just going to... They're going to kick it to the curb. The year, which I'm only going to show you one clip because I think it's really funny. Okay. This is Elon Musk, who was spotted at the Let's event. Try and close. Getting shown on camera and then getting booed. Here, surely. <laughs> and then after he gets booed for a little bit, they start chanting. Paper X. Another challenge for them. Bring back Twitter. True. I agree, Elon. I feel like he's going to bring back Twitter eventually. Just like it's like he's gonna pull a blizzard, you know, like you saw Elon Musk was playing Diablo 4 Maybe he learned something and so like maybe he's gonna take something away from all the users and then give it back to them later as content and then have everybody pat him on the back for it But anyway, that was a good month for Valorant. Oh, they had a bunch of views. Everybody blizzard. was super hype EG won it over paper X great lovely however they have just hit us with a bomb that next year, uh -huh. uh, VCT Americas uh, is is not going to let anybody ascend. Fuck Aiden. I keep getting caught by FOMO investing. He put a lot of money into a CSGO knife and it made a lot of money. And then I started looking at the CSGO knives. But that's stupid. I have to stop being stupid with my money. And one way to do that is by getting a 5.5% yield on my cash by buying government-backed treasury You guys bills. have to admit... It would have been really fucking funny if Ludwig had transitioned to an ad about CSGO gambling. Like, you have to admit, like, that would have been fucking hilarious.
Oh my god, that would have been so good. And then, like, at the end of the video, he's like, yeah, guys, so this ad, you know, we're not making any money out of the esports team, so guess what we love now? That's right. Skins and gambling. Yeah, sometimes I say smart stuff. That's obviously a much higher yield than a savings account, and it's also a fixed rate, so you know you're going to get 5.5% back. And it's backed by the government, who will probably be around for a while. But there's a problem. It can be a little tricky to buy U.S. Treasuries, and that's where Public comes in. They're the sponsor of today's video and also a super easy one-stop shop to get your U.S. Treasuries instead of using a website that looks like it's from 1996. So if you want to be a little bit smarter and a little less like Aiden, then go to public.com. How does his hair grow back? Simple. It's public. He used code mogul on public.com and his hair grew back like that in a day. Google Mail right now, or click the link in the description to get Isn't started. That crazy. Thank you to Public for sponsoring this video. All right, goodbye. See you later. Goodbye. And who is this guard? Why are they doing this? Is this riots doing? Is is this the guard's fault? Well, to explain it, the guard uh, is a esports team well, owned by the people who also recently. own SoFi Stadium, the Los yeah. Angeles Rams. I think they own like a like a super good football team in Europe. Yeah, the as guy well. that owns the guard is worth like uh, a lot of money. Like uh, I don't know how much money, but it's like uh, the it's, the number is like so big that like it's a lot of money. They're incredibly rich. They're Super also yeah, not yeah, yeah. that interested in staying in esports. In February, I talked yeah. about this in another Mogul Mail. The Guard laid off almost all of their staff. They were basically operating a skeleton crew to get their franchise teams <laughs> like Call of Duty and Valorant through the end of the season. And then from there, we weren't really sure what was going to happen. But we found out. Yeah. that they were no longer planning to compete. They're basically planning on shutting down the whole operation, and I think they failed to find a buyer for their whole team, and I don't think they're willing to maybe just sell off parts of it. I'm not exactly sure. Who knows? Uh, and this was news, by the way, not just to the Valorant world, but also to the people at The Guard, because this was a tweet from The Guard's social media team uh, literally last week, a couple days ago. What a year for North American Valorant. Congrats, The Guard. Can't wait to battle in 2024. They're not going to battle anymore. And at this point, it's worth explaining how this all works, all right? And I drew up this little schematic because it is fucking confusing. Basically, Moist Moguls, me and Charlie, are in Tier 2, all right? Which is just That's BWL, North American guys. teams, and, and I guess also Canadian teams, I'll put them here, uh, competing. And, and if you are the top two of 12 teams, you get mm -hmm. to compete with all the Tier 2 teams from both Americas, South America yeah. and North America. Six people compete in this. So it's two from the U.S., two from Brazil, two from South America. Sure. And then as uh, those six people uh, turn into one champion who gets to go to Tier 1, where you Got get it. all the money, all the trophies, all the viewership. You smoke a bunch of weed. Oh, it's yeah. tight. It's dope. Everybody wants to do that. And who got to do that was the guard. They beat everybody, including us. And we were a damn good team. We were third place. But then we come to today's news. So basically, this whole year, this Ascension tournament, all the games that we watched didn't actually matter because nobody's going to Ascend. And I don't blame the people at the Guard, by the way. They didn't even know about this. This is Jonah P., one of the Guard members, who said, what People did I need to remember that like esports exists to promote a video game. Esports don't exist to provide a salary to a player. They don't exist to provide a, uh, an organization with a means to make money. Uh, that they exist to promote the video game. And to the extent that they do not promote the video game, well, then the esports is not invested in. Look at what happens with Nintendo. And oftentimes it's shut down. Look at Overwatch League. I wake up to, and what was his tweet two days ago? I've never been more motivated to play. Like, that is what we are dealing with. People who are just excited to play, who are finding out they're no longer allowed to play yeah. because their organization won't sign the paperwork. At this point, it's expl uh, it's worth explaining. What is the paperwork? Like, wh what? why did they not sign it? Probably like a sheet of paper. And, and the answer is, it's basically a list of things that they are guaranteeing to provide to their players. Riot will not directly provide uh, housing and and uh, salaries to yes. all the people in yeah. their league. Sure. However, they do give a stipend to teams, but the stipend doesn't necessarily cover all of the costs. And Makes there's an sense. expectation that the team will pay for everything. All right. So they'll pay for a facility in Los Angeles because that's where the teams play. Right. They'll pay for the salaries based off the league minimums. They'll have a certain amount of staff on board to, to help run uh, and operate the business. And the guard, because they don't want to spend any more money, 
because maybe they don't think it's worth the time because they certainly have the money, but maybe they think their time is best spent elsewhere, refuse to sign it. All right. So we're talking about. I think about that people are starting to realize that, like, and this is a problem. I think it's mainly localized in NA because South America doesn't have this problem as much, and neither does South Korea. And I don't know about Europe. I don't really understand their culture over there. I'm, I'm not sure. But in North America, at least, we don't really have a very big culture of supporting esports players. We just don't. And if you compare it to the amount of enthusiasm that people in South America have, Spanish community has, uh, people in South Korea, uh, it's just a completely different situation. So the problem is that whenever you're trying to make money on esports, you're almost like wasting your time trying to monetize something in North America. Now we have real sports. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why. Why is it like this? I think there's probably a hundred different reasons why it's like this. There's cultural reasons. There's probably just different types of economic reasons. I have no idea. But the ultimate outcome is that esports in North America isn't taken seriously. It's not supported as much as in other places in the world. And because of that, you're seeing a lot of esports teams start to realize that and move out of sponsoring teams that are in NA. That's why, uh, where was the, uh, I think that there was like some league or something like that where like not even hardly a single team had any NA players. I forgot if this was like league or if it was like CSGO or something like that. I have no idea. But it's just, yeah, it was, yeah, it was LCS. Yeah, exactly. And the problem is that a lot of people in the uh, in the West, for whatever reason, just don't give a fuck about it that's just that's just it and like i mean you can try to find ways to excite people about it i i think you know shout out to sentinels i think sentinels does probably one of the best jobs at trying to bring esports to an na audience in a way that's uh understandable and i think they probably have like one of the best outreaches but i mean still that's you know like fuck I, that that's not as good as what's happening in south korea right it's not as good as what's happening in uh in in south america and so what's happened for such a long time is that they've uh you know people have invested a lot of money into esports and the returns just haven't really been there or at least not for the north american teams and for the north american organizations and stuff like that and because of that guess what happens well people eventually stop investing that's it West has a culture of real sports teams, so I think people see it as almost insulting for some chair moistener to call himself an athlete. Yeah, I think that you're right about that. Uh, because, the, yeah, the U.S. has such a massive sports culture anyway, people almost view it as like an insult that esports even exist. I, I actually think that's a big factor. And, like, I'm not talking about, like, whether this is... Uh, this is the way it should be or not like i'm not no 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 i'm not talking about that i'm just saying this is what i think a lot of people believe gaming is too small gaming is something for children yeah but like you can always say that but like how is it how is that not a problem in other places in the world right and so like yeah what i'm saying is like it's too small in this culture Uh, let's see here. The top eight crickets uh, have a combined total of 480 million followers, with the most popular cricketer having 250 million, way higher than the most popular American athlete. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, people are just like ape shit over sports players in Europe. Absolutely. Uh, hey, you basically have to sign a piece of paper that says, hey, I'll pay millions of dollars for my players to operate yeah. in your league. In exchange, you give me a stipend that covers some of it, but not all of it. And then we go on and we have great times in franchise. They don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. It is kind of weird they don't want to do it, but it also makes sense because they fired all their teams uh, and all their staff uh, in February. They're basically operating just a, a, a bare minimum that they don't want to now increase it to go back to what they were in February. Which logically makes sense. it sucks for us. It sucks yeah. for the people in the league. So here's what I think we should do. And I think there's really one option here, but if it somehow doesn't work, there's a backup. The main option is let the players keep the slot. These are five players and a coach who have grinded their ass off all year. They didn't make the cut for the initial franchise teams. They were super close. Uh, they, they were an amazing team. They won the Ludwig Tarek Invitational. They proved they were the best of, of not just North America, but South America for tier, for tier two. Let them compete. 
right? Let, let somebody else come in and pay the fees. And maybe they rebrand or whatever, yeah, sure. but give the ownership to the players for the two years that they're allowed to be up there. Because we've talked about this before, but when you ascend, when you finally go up to the tier one, you only do that for two years. And then you go back over to here. You only get this two-year waiting period. It's okay. dumb. There should be relegation. We should have it so the worst person in tier one drops down, not just the person who went up. Because what if the guard were to win the entire thing? Mm -hmm. That would be kind of dumb to drop them down. At least I think so. So I would like for some changes to be there. But, that, but that's a conversation for another day. So anyway, back to it. We should allow the players to keep it, all right? And maybe offer them, like, right... Letting the players keep the team and compete anyway, I think that's probably a good thing. I think that would probably be a good narrative. Uh, why would they not do this? I, I have no idea. I mean, maybe they could be seen as, like, uh, because the players weren't actually getting a salary, they could be seen as abusing the players or taking advantage of them. Uh, I think that Riot is very conflict-adverse, so anything that could potentially paint them in a bad light would just... Th that's why they wouldn't do that. The legal reasons, maybe? Yeah, I, I think that could be it. Because they signed it with the guard and there's some sort of fucking ownership of it. Yeah. Refusal. So if they want to go to another team, they can. But, but if they want to stay on the team, they also can. Yeah. And I'm sure there's at least six people who will instantly pay one, two, three million dollars to have their name in the franchise slot with these- I don't know if they would or not. I have no idea. But like somebody said in chat, and I think this is a really good point that they're bringing up. Um, they said time to get a real job. And I think that's the way that a lot of people view esports. They view esports as not real. They view it as a joke and it shouldn't be taken seriously. They don't think it's a real job. It doesn't matter. They have no respect for it. And it's enough of a cultural outlook that anybody who's doing esports is going to be subjected to that. Boomers, yep. I don't think it's just boomers. I think it's people like... I think there's a tremendous amount of people that are like uh, under 25 who think this. And the main reason why they think that is sour grapes. They say, I'm working at Starbucks... And I don't like that this fucking nerd that plays a video game is getting paid $80,000 a year. That's what it really is. So people are, are just pissed off about that. And then they see somebody who's making all this money playing a video game and it makes them even more mad. And, and like, I'm not saying that like they're accurate or, it, you know, this is justifiable or whatever, but there it is. I hate esports because non-esports players play every online game like a tournament is on the line because they're all delusional and think they're the next esports star. Absolutely, that's an issue. I think that a lot of people feel that way. But what I'm saying is that like in our culture, you know, in a culture, people that are from NA, I don't know about Europe. I'm sure there's a lot of people from Europe here too. Uh, they have a very negative opinion of esports. Very negative players, even if they don't have full control over kicking them out. I think that would happen. If for whatever Somebody reason... Somebody's just saying it and, 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 and playing it is different. Saying it and believing it is different. But it's not about saying it or believing it. It's about the fact that they don't watch the games. It's the same thing with, like, uh, WNBA, right? Everybody can talk about how the WNBA is, you know, like, the same as the NBA. And there's, like, a lot of really great athletes on there. And, you know, they, they really try their heart out. And they're, you know, doing their best and everything like that. But at the end of the day, you've got Jedian sleeping on the fucking courtside seats and you zoom out and the court's not even full up. And then whenever he gets, everybody gets mad at him for it. Everybody's saying, well, he, hey, bro, I'd be sleeping too. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what should be. If you don't have asses in those seats, you don't have a fucking game. And that's just how it is. That can't happen. Let the runner up go. Who is M80? They got second place in this North American, South American tournament. They beat out all the Brazilian teams and the South American teams. Mm -hmm. Let them go, right? If, if for whatever reason yeah. you can't do that. To me, that, that makes the most sense. I mean, we already have people who have offered to buy the, the slot. Mm -hmm. Disguised Toast. He'd be a great representative. And I'm sure he'd be fine keeping the team along. Let me tell you, Toast is good with any team as long as they got a heartbeat. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Just a, just a tease. And the real question is, what was the game plan for people in Tier 2, right? People in, in the lower league 
if they just didn't have the money, if they didn't have a huge org behind them. If an no. unsigned team won Ascension, would they just not get the slot? Like, for example, Turtle Troop is the only team here who's not signed by an organization. It is just a group of free agent players who happen to be fucking amazing at Valorant. Amazing. Just five nerds. Amazing enough that they've made it through any other group of five into the tier two system. That's cool. Which is beautiful in a way. Yeah, I love that. That you and your friends, if you're good enough, can create a team and you can work up from tier three, aka just Joe Blows, to tier two, which is a riot sanctioned event, to possibly tier one. Exactly. I completely agree with him because... Like, those narratives are what create excitement in games. Like, it, it, and, and this is, like, really the... I, I think that the best example of this is um, uh, UFC. Is it, like, UFC has a lot of um, characters. And, like, whenever you have, like, certain fights in UFC, people want to see those different characters fight. Right? I mean, yeah, they have an underdog. These people have a personality. There's a story to it, et cetera, right? And, like, somebody like Conor McGregor is a great example. Everybody had an opinion of Conor McGregor. Like, better for better or worse, everybody had a fucking opinion. And the worst thing to have is a bunch of nameless, faceless teams full of boring people that don't do anything. That's the worst thing for you to have. But Riot saying, actually, no. You can't do that. Because they've actually replied to this before. Uh -huh. This was raised at VCT Pacific this year when Bonker made it to playoffs. Riot straight up said winning Ascension does not guarantee a spot in the pros. What orgs, ha uh, orgs have to pass a vetting process, which basically means they have to have enough money to pay for all the things that Riot expects. And if they don't have it, well, GG, you're not getting the slot. Well, and it's again, I think the reason why Riot is doing that is because they don't, Riot doesn't want to be put in a position. Like, for example, I'll, uh, this is like kind of a tangent, but hopefully you can see kind of the parallel here is, do you know how whenever streamers do like a, uh, like a fan art competition, you always have these angry people on Twitter that are like, I can't believe you're just like, you know, abusing artists to try to like make them compete in a lottery to get paid. Do you guys, you guys see, you guys see this, right? Yeah, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page with this. So, like, yeah, this is very common. Uh, it happens a lot. So, I think Riot is actually not. I don't think it's a legal thing. I think that Riot is worried that if the players are not being properly compensated whenever they're competing in this big league, then the players will not be able to. Or, sorry, it could it could reflect badly on Riot, or it could make them look bad. Because also what it could make them look like is now they have people that are competing in their top league that aren't able to make enough money to live. Now they have people that are competing in their top league who can't even afford a house. So Riot could inadvertently put themselves in a bad position with PR. And again, this is PR that doesn't matter. Like Riot could just easily avoid this and nobody would care. But big companies are like usually super, 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 super conflict adverse. And because of how conflict adverse they are, they try to just always, anytime that there's a problem, they will just avoid it and not deal with it. So uh, that's really what happens. And that's why I think this is happening more so. Now, there could also be like different types of accountability issues with like distribution of payment, et cetera. But I think that's the main reason. The main reason is because they don't want to be put in a position where it could look like they are taking advantage of the players that are in the league or the players in the league were not being properly compensated to an extent that would make Riot not look bad. Because again, the league exists in service of riot it does not exist in service of the guard of moist moguls of sentinels of any player it exists in service exclusively for riot and that's where we're left off i don't fuck with it seems like everybody else is mad about it on twitter and reddit hopefully riot makes a change to it hopefully this adds some fuel to the fire and the only thing i want to leave you on outside of this is that moist is still around okay we're we're working on big things uh, and if yep. you guys want, you can join Charlie live uh, in in uh, in Florida to watch our our, our teams live, a little live that's watch cool. party. Only twenty five bucks. So if you want to go do that, that's that's a fun thing. Anyway, that's it. That's all I got for you guys. Have a good rest of your day. Uh, right, right, right. Oh, please fix game and see you later. Goodbye. Have a good one. Goodbye. Yeah, I'm sure they're gonna fix it and it's gonna be no problem and everything's gonna be solved. I just got and to that's gonna be it. 
So, yeah, thank God. Uh, great. Uh, it's literally just a Riot problem, not an esports problem. This only happens for Valorant and League. The Valve method is much better. Yeah, but the Valve method has other problems too, right? Where, like, a lot of the people that are sponsored in CSGO are promoting gambling. So, like, Riot doesn't have that problem, but they have another problem. And the same thing with Overwatch, right? Overwatch League is getting fucked over. Who cares? Well, yeah, but you could say who cares about this too. So, and this is the problem, is that, like, I think that the main reason why this happens is because NA does not give a fuck about esports. And not only do they not give a fuck about it, but some of NA actively resent esports. They don't like the idea that people, these little fucking scrawny nerds, can call themselves athletes like LeBron James and then make money off of it. That's what it is. I really think it's that simple. Usually, if you're looking for the real reason why something is happening, think of the stupidest reason possible, the dumbest thing that you could possibly imagine, and that's probably it. Yeah, that's probably why it's happening. I call them pro players instead of athletes. I don't care. Call themselves athletes, call themselves pro players. It doesn't matter to me. Like, I don't, I don't even, like, I don't care. I don't, it doesn't matter. Like, why would I even think about this for a second? I think that the reason why people want to have that conversation is because they want to, like, they, they want to take esports players down a notch under athletes. And why is that? Because they don't respect it as much. So think about it like that. Some people also hate real sports and think it's pointless too, man. Oh, absolutely. You're you're totally right. And like uh, my dad is like that. My dad doesn't give a fuck about sports. I mean, yeah, you know, I grew up in like the fucking 50s and 60s. So like he played baseball and shit. And like, you know, sometimes if we're over at somebody's house, we'll watch, uh, watch sports. But he said, why the fuck would I go watch sports? I work in a fucking safe shop. I'm a locksmith. I went to fucking Vietnam. I'm working out in the sun. Like I'm fucking tired. I'm I'm not going to exercise because that's what I do for work, you know? So, yeah, I think there's a lot of people that feel like he does. But, of course, I think that even inside of that, all of those people also give even less of a fuck about Valorant. So, however little of a fuck they give about basketball, it's even smaller when you refer to Valorant. So, yeah. You dad should pick locks on stream. I told him to do that. He can take like one of the master locks out of the thing and he can just like fucking uh, open it. Like, I, I don't know how he was like talking to me about how to do it, like trying to show me how to do it. I, I think I might be able to do it, but I, I haven't really done it myself. So yeah, have him do a safe. He said he used to be able to do some small safes, but uh, I, I don't think he'd be able to do that now. <laughs> yeah. Master Ross can be open with soda can easily. No, I just mean by listening to it and like feeling it. And uh, I can't bother to give a fuck about video game players not being paid two thirds of the time what I make. Probably why the community appeal doesn't work with the esports. Well, the thing is, like, again, and this is like such a great comment because, like, again, I I'm gonna I'm gonna show this right here because this is exactly what I'm talking about. So. As a working class person, video game players complaining that they can't afford a fucking house is hilarious and frustrating. I can't be bothered to give a fuck about video game players not being paid two thirds of the times what I make. Probably why the community appeal doesn't work with esports. And this is like, I think that you're being a salty bitch, but does it really matter what I think? Does it really matter whether I think you're being a salty bitch? Because if I call you a salty bitch, it's not like you're going to be like, oh, I know, I'm sorry. I'm going to watch the Valorant tournament like a good boy. No. No, you're not. So it doesn't even make a difference. So at the end of the day, this is how people really feel. And until we stop getting comments like this, nobody is going to give a fuck about esports. And by nobody, I mean not enough people for it to be profitable. Dude ain't wrong, though. Exactly. How many of you guys feel the same way he does? Be honest. Me? Yep. Yeah. There it is. There it is. That's why it doesn't work. Yep. It's too common. 
Refresh, mate. You read me wrong? Bro, I read you wrong. How the fuck did I read you wrong? Oh, get the fuck out of here. What do you want to say now? I'm just saying that's why a lot of people probably don't care. Probably why a lot of people probably- You're not talking about a lot of people. You're saying as a working class person. As a... What do you mean? You're talking about yourself. I'm not even criticizing you. I said that you're entitled to your opinion. Why are you being a bitch? What are you doing? Jesus. I meant the wage. What? It, what? I, I know. Like, uh, wait. Okay. You don't like or respect esports. You're not happy with how much money they make. You don't think it's fair. Okay. There you go. He said two or three times, but you said two thirds as much. Oh, oh, two. Th oh, that changes everything. Oh, oh, well. Oh, that sh Oh, well, now it's totally different. Oh, wow. Well, okay, yeah, I guess we're gonna, gonna have to go back to the drawing board on this one then. Damn. Jesus.